it's me Chris Ormy and this is Football Manager 2016. Now today we're going to carry on with our series with Catania and uh, there's been a few changes. I will run you through all the changes. A few of the moves I made in the transfer market, the squad moves I've made as well as a little bit of tactical backroom and whatnot. So we're going to run through things in order. Now the first thing to note here is tactics. I'm going to be playing um, an interesting tactic here. It's a narrow 4-2-3-1. We do have good attacking midfielders and good central midfielders. Not a lot out wide. There's one or two players out wide. Uh, and not too much up top either. So there were two strikers I trusted up top. And... That was about it. So really, with this formation, we're going to be looking to try and dominate play high up the pitch. Uh, and just be really sort of very defensive-minded at the back. So, I've gone with this formation. I'm going to run you through the players in each position as well. So, first off is the goalkeeper, Ella Basti Bastianoni. Um... Good young goalkeeper. I, I thought I'd go with him rather than the guy that was in on loan. Um, you know, we might as well play our own players if we can. And he looks pretty good, you know. For this league, I think he'll be a pretty good goalkeeper. Right back, we already saw in the last video, it is Desiderio Garufo. A very solid right back. Who again, like our goalkeeper, I think is uh, is good for this level, and it might take us a year or two to get out to this level. So we'll see where we happen to be at the end of things. Uh, we've also got a new guy in the team, Matteo Bruscagin. He is a left back who can play right back. Um, pretty decent again. You know, just a free transfer. We picked him up. He's come down from Serie B and I'm really happy with him because that was a little bit of a weakness. We do have a youngster at left back uh, and a couple other sort of covering options. But really we needed a new player for that role. So I've decided to go with Matteo there. Stefano Ferrario, of course, our best centre back, our beast at the back, tall, strong. You know, can jump well. He'll be clearing the balls in the air quite nicely. I'm quite happy with Stefano. And another new signing. I've only just managed to land him after pretty much a month of contract negotiations. There were two big names that I'd, uh, I targeted for this save. Oguchi Onyeo was one of them. And... And yeah, he was a very, very good defender for this level. He's a little bit slow. You know, we, we know he's a little bit slow and he makes a couple of mistakes in his old age. He's, you know, not as good as he used to be. But he's a very, very, very accomplished defender. And I think that really solidifies our back line. The partnership between Ferrario and Onyeyu will be a very good partnership. So I'm hoping that back line with the goalkeeper there really sets us up going forward. And uh, Gianluca Musashi, I think, is a very nice central midfielder. He's only out for the next week or so. He's going to miss our debut game, which is coming up today. So we will be playing that here in the video. We'll be getting off and seeing exactly how good our team is. It's only a cup game. But we'll get a few ideas. So Gianluca is again another solid midfielder. And uh, I believe him alongside De Seco will really sort of tie that midfield up and give us a lot of a lot of chance there. Only problem is Dominicio is out for three months. Dominicio De Seco, our best player, is not gonna be around the club. For the start of my reign, which is slightly disappointing. Slightly disappointing. 
Um, I've gone with a ball-winning midfielder and a deep-lying playmaker in those midfield roles. I think that's a good combination. Limited defender, central defender, I think also works in the back line. So I'm very happy with our shape there. And that, that should really, you know, that's ball retention, that's ball winning, and really the start of our attacks. When we get the ball back, they're going to be looking for the more creative players. Now, to start with the more creative players, I've gone ahead again and signed somebody. 30-year-old George Alonso, Spaniard, very nice player. Uh, I think he's a bit too good for this level, but that's kind of what we want. Plays 1-2, dictates tempo, a couple of really nice sort of preferred moves there, in my opinion, for this position. So, I like, I like the role he plays, like the way he plays set pieces long shots i mean there's a little bit of everything here with george that really could help us going forward uh, and also jovial which is quite nice in you know the dressing rooms i don't know whether we're going to be in for a tough season but an 11 point deduction i think someone jovial is exactly what we need in that sort of in that changing room there so on the other side currently out injured our third injury in midfield out for a couple of weeks is Andrea Russotto now I like him a lot highly determined professional he will be playing on the left and cutting inside onto his right foot I think that's a nice balance what we've got over the other side so hopefully when he comes back we'll be able to do something there and uh, playing behind the striker I've got set up as a second striker is Sitano Khalil and uh, CC as I'm going to start calling him again is a good player for this level and I think you know that shadow striker role is really what he's going to be good at I I'm a bit worried about lack of anticipation off the ball those kind of roles sort of in that final third I feel they need those kind of attributes there to make the most of the space to find a little bit of room and know exactly what's going to happen but now he can dribble he can finish he's got some free kick abilities he likes to shoot from distance and you know ball retention as well if he can't get a goal maybe he's got a through ball maybe he's got a ball out wide to any other attacking midfielders so i'm quite happy with him and of course up front playing as an advanced forward, trying to make a bit of room to let that second striker come up, is Atullo Lopoli, and he should be getting goals at this level. He really should. So he's going to be leading the line. Khalil behind him, just pinging balls and shots everywhere. Rosotto sort of getting the ball out wide a little and cutting in. Alonso sitting back a little bit more and sort of deep deep balls deep crosses and uh, yeah that's not too bad but we have got some issues here in defense sort of lack of cover um, in certain positions and lack of cover in center midfield as well so we're just gonna have a quick look at these guys Liverani on loan I didn't want to give him the starting job because there's not much difference between our two goalkeepers and uh, I wouldn't want to give it to a, you know, a starting role to a goalkeeper that isn't at our club. So striker's the only on loan player that we actually want to be starting. Falcone is a winger, uh, but he's got good finishing. He's got a little bit of off the ball. I think he'll work as a backup striker, and that's an area we really do lack in. Uh, I did try and get a big name in up front. But it didn't work out. I was going to put Lapoli on the bench and get a really big name in up front. But we couldn't get the deal done. There wasn't enough money at the club. So uh, we had to move on. Uh, Francesco Bombaghi attacking midfield. Great option off the bench. He's actually played really well in preseason. Uh, and he does slot right in on that left-hand side to replace Rosotto who's currently injured. So that's quite nice. David Agassi will come into that centre midfield and we don't lose much at all 
from Diseko Musashi being out from Agazi playing. We're also going to have to go with Castiglia, who is a very decent player again, but I think just offers a little bit less than some of the other players we got, really, in position. So, number one, Musashi. Number two, Agazi. Number three, Bombagi. And that means we've got a fit lineup. They're not match sharp yet, especially Alonso, Bruce Gagin and uh, Onyewu, because they've only just joined the club. So we do need to find some midfielders to put on our bench. Another new signing is Abel Gigli. Gigli? I'm not sure how. I think Gigli. Abel Gigli. 24-year-old. Um, solid little defender. No mentals whatsoever, but... My assistant rates him highly, and I think he could do a good job for this club. And as well, uh, Alessandro Bastrini was our left back. He can cover the left, he can cover centre back. I'm happy with him there. We've also got Bergamelli in centre back. Another decent cover there, although I might try and get rid of him. And Tino Parisi. Now, Parisi is a good youngster with potential, but he just doesn't seem to be. Good enough. So we're going to send him down. We have also got, at left back, Juan Ramos. Very similar to Parisi. He's someone that's got a bit of potential, um, a bit of ability, but not quite enough. So we might use these two over the course of the season. I'm trying to sell a few players that we've got in that reserve team as well. But those are our formation. The players we're going to use, those are kind of the tactics we are looking at. Uh, next thing really to look at is transfers. We do have Terraciano going out for half a million. And we've had to sell some youngsters. We've, we've loaned out a few, but let's do most expensive last. So we'll start here with Francesco Napolitano. Good potential, 16-year-old right winger. If I was playing with wingers, I'd really want to keep this guy, but we've got a little bit more sort of uh, money coming. There's you know, there's profit, there's money after games, there's you know, money next season over 12 months and so on in all of these deals. These are all four youngsters that I've had to sell. Napolitano, I didn't feel would make the team in the next two to three years, and he doesn't fit my formation. So we managed to get forty thousand for him. Around the same time, we got Panettieri, fifteen-year-old attacking midfield. Now I was really tempted with trying to blood this guy this year, but he's just not good enough yet. And seventy-five thousand goes a long way to actually strengthening other parts of the team. So he wouldn't be ready for maybe four years, I'd say, to play in this team, uh, by which point I really want to be on, on the cusp of promotion from Serie B, if possible. So I think we'll have better options going forward. I don't think he's great. I think he's good compared to what other youngsters and for this league. But ultimately, I do not believe he is good enough for a Serie A team to start. I don't think he's got that much potential of where I want them. So, 75,000 is okay for him. Recently, we sold Giacomo Graziano, a good young striker, but again, someone not a lot of potential, maybe not even a lot of potential for this league, and some glaring weaknesses there. No physicals, very few mentals, um, but 70,000 plus extras going forward. I think it's about 120 to 150 in total for that one. I think Napolitano's 100, Graziano and Panettieri are 120 to 150 grand apiece, and Migliaccio, uh, 200 grand up front to Sassuolo. This is a 500k deal plus 50% of any profit going forward. So I figured as a 16 year old, this kid is good. He might have made the bench, but I could get cover in defence, I've already got cover in defence, 
He's my number seven at the moment. He was number five before I brought people in. Um, yeah, it was time to get rid. It was time to get rid for a good amount of money for a young 16-year-old. The only one I'd really want to keep going for, because I do believe he could be a Serie A defender in the future. But just not yet. Just not yet. We're not the kind of club that we can keep hold of good youngsters. We do need to sell. We need to use that money then to pay wages, to pay all the sort of... Uh, all the backroom staff changes we did. So, we've needed to do that. Now, we did have a few too many staff in certain areas as well. So, physios and uh, my chief scout went out. I didn't think... Ferrigno was good enough. 12s for judging. Tamaro as well, but that wasn't a great assistant, so we just decided we'd let him go as well. We cleaned up as well with you know an extra fitness coach for the youth team who is terrible. A goalkeeping coach, which was pretty bad for the under-18s. We've cleared all that up. We're back under where we need to be. I've brought in a few people. As you can see here. So Montenegro comes in as the assistant for the under 18s. I think he is a very, very good uh very good addition. Couple of nice skills there. I'm quite happy. He's probably better than our first team assistant that we started with, so that's pretty good. Um we did upgrade assistant here with Fabrizio Picaretta, formerly of Sunderland, formerly of Inter Milan before that. I believe he he's worked under Paolo Di Canio at Sunderland. Or was it Di Matteo? I he was there. Um, and yeah, he works really well with youngsters. Determination is great. The motivation is great. A little bit of tactical knowledge and good judging skills. So I'm very happy to have someone like him be my number two. That's going to be great. Canatio, decent all-round coach. Giofrida, another good coach this time. More sort of technically based. Zonomir Boban, good player in his day. I remember him uh, lighting up the world, really, with Croatia at times. Played for AC Milan for a bunch of years. So I've brought him in to be an under-18s coach. Uh, nines everywhere is decent for that level, and Ivano Della Morte, exactly the same. He's got nines. Wow, my mouse just doesn't want to stay on that eye, does it? Hmm, that's very interesting. That's very interesting. The laser on my mouse just keeps picking things up, apparently. But Ivano is another very good coach for this level, especially under 18s. He'd be a decent coach for the first team, I believe. You know, he'd be a, a backup coach. So, you know, he works well with youngsters, as does uh, Boban's not bad at it, and our under 18s assistant is pretty decent as well. So that's the staff that we've rebuilt, which leaves us with the best coaching in Saria CC. Now we are third in fitness. I did not try and upgrade that, I just went with what we've got. Everything else apart from goalkeeping, I think I went with what we got. Um, it says that we can have more physios but that number keeps going up and down every couple of days so I'm not going to do anything there. I did ask for more physios and more coaches they turned me down for both, so I'm not sure why I'd have more now. But currently, anyway, even with a reduced physio team, we are second in the league. So I'm very happy with that. And uh, our scouting team, I think we're one... I think we're one larger than we should be. I think we, we're supposed to have eight, and we've got nine. But we are the best at scouting as well so that's very good we set up training or i've set up the training here for the coaches everybody's doing one thing apart from me 
and the goalkeeping coach because I couldn't get another goalkeeping coach in. So the first team training is not amazing. I'd love to bring in a ball control coach so I could switch to attacking or maybe shooting and drop someone else into attacking. That's not going to happen yet. And the under-18s coaches, we've got two in all these fields, apart from goalkeeping again, which I would like to improve going forward, and attacking, which I'm taking, and we're doing a good enough job there anyway. So light training workload for the coaches there. I felt that was important. The first team, we need a few more bodies in, but the board won't allow us to actually get anyone. So that's our tactics, that's our starting team. Those have been our transfers, that's our training. All the T's have been done. So now what we need to do is get the first game underway and hopefully get a good result. So I'll be back after replacing these three players on the bench, uh, hopefully with midfielders. And I'll see you back here very soon. Well, okay. I've uh, slotted in three young midfielders. Got an attacking midfielder, a couple of centre midfielders, none of which are particularly good. Uh, but they're fit and they're available, and that is kind of the key right now. So Bergen Merle doesn't play. He's not quite good enough. Our three injuries, I really hope they don't last uh, too long over the course of the season. I'd like to get these three players in particular back into the lineup. We can miss one or two elsewhere, I believe, but really, centre mid is somewhere I cannot afford to have long term injuries, especially with Deseco being our best player quite easily. But um, luckily, our, our defence sort of fills up the next sort of five spots of best players. So, at the back, we should be good enough, but I really need that quality in midfield and up front to take us forward. Lacking match sharpness, yes. Seven substitution were possible, 12. That's fine, I don't care. I don't care. I'm used to dealing with seven subs. That is absolutely fine. So this is our managerial debut. And okay, we're up against a very defensive formation here. Four, uh, sorry, the 5-4-1 diamond. Interesting. That's very interesting. So, always, always, always close them down. Always put them on hard tackling. We're going to show them onto their weaker foot. And we're going to close down the goalkeeper as well. Hard tackling on the wing back. Stop them making runs forward. I think that'll do it for me there. That's a nice sort of simple way of doing things. So let's start with something for the fans. Nothing really there. So assertively, let's see. Uh, Ferrario enjoyed that. He's happy. Calm the midfield. And that's Castiglia. And up front, let's inject a bit of passion into the poly. Yeah, we did. Nice. So one defender, one attacker, one midfielder. That's okay. That's okay. Deep in thought. I mean, it's not the best. These aren't my tactics. Usually I go at attacking and fluid and I change a few things there. But the one thing I will not change due to um, my coaching and backroom staff advice is the formation anything else i would do and i have done so i do play in 2d let's put those up where they should do no replays i'm not a big fan of replays so i've got things set up here you can see the team ratings are here body language i think is important to note this for your team our performance in case anything crops up and of course the match stats 
So let's get this going then. You can see there they've got a flat back five pretty much against my one man up front. So we should be able to gain a lot of possession uh, and hopefully we'll be able to counter attack quite well if they do push their full backs up uh, and be able to, s yeah, we should be able to sort of uh, handle their attacks and counter attacks fairly well with this formation. I think they're fairly narrow in midfield, which would suit us. Okay, let's go more direct. I don't mind going more direct. So Gazi was a little frustrated there. And uh, not much happening in this. What have we got it set to? Key highlights. We'll keep it on key. So this is only a cup game. It's a little bit of a run out for the boys. And really I'm just wanting to see what they can do and how they do. So quarter an hour is gone. Nothing really nothing really happening here so let's tell them to get creative let's see what that does does it inject anything into it we seem to be losing the midfield battle to Pisa getting caught offside a couple of times but possession is ours and uh, we're doing okay Midfield's been outnumbered. I don't know how. They don't really have much in midfield either. Alonso to Kelly. The Pauli. Oh, good shot on target there. So I haven't set up any tactics for set piece routines. I'll have to sort those out later. Yeah, see, I'm not sure about control. That's nice. Oh! He just hit the post with a beautiful shot from out there. I'm going to come out in more attacking style. That's how I like my teams to play. I like to put the other team on the back foot and we'll handle counter-attacks as they happen. I believe we're the better team. We've played that way so far. So why not try and take a little bit of advantage from it? Wow, come on, Gim. Wow. Oh, my God. Please? No. All right, half hour into the match. Let's push forward. We're going to try and pin Pisa back and really go for things so let's see more direct I prefer us to hit the early crosses I'm going to change into a bit more of my formation than there's low crosses, yes. And I've missed a goal doing that. Oh, Gucci. So, let's see what we got going on here then so there's a ball up here to Alonso and he gets taken out there yellow card and then Alonso a new signing ball in gets us a nice little corner he's on it again Alonso to Oguchi so it's a debut goal for Oguchi and uh Alonso there, not a bad start either. Not a bad start at all. If you can't hear dogs in the background, I do apologise. I am trying to uh, <laughs> sort them out. And here we go on the counter-attack. Oh, see, no. CC does like to shoot from distance. So, 
He's hit the post once, that one flew a little wide. But a decent counter-attack, and I do believe giving him the ball in those areas, with the poorly doing a lot of the running, I think that's a nice partnership up front that hopefully will lead us into the top half of the table this season. So, this should be half-time. And that's not a bad performance, really, in the first half here. Oh, my God. Days, what? The last kick. The last kick of the first half, boys. I'm not happy. I am not happy. Let's see if we can... See if we can't fire these boys up. I have no idea why my computer's running so slowly now. But it really does seem to be running slowly, so... Um, yeah, that's a decent reaction from the team. You've got one or two players playing okay. Alonso with the assist has been uh, pretty impressive, I feel. For his debut. And Yewu there good at the back. So I do think our formation is slightly. It's going to take a little while to get. Get used to for the players. But it is. It's probably the right one for the players we've got at the club. Um, and it should suit my philosophy of attacking football as well. And being able to set. You know a few players back to defend. And then quite a lot of players as well that we can throw up front with basically that attacking midfield trio and a striker. I think that should be enough up front. So let's make a team talk. Assertive. Encourage. I'm going to keep an eye on the condition of my players as well. Because... You always want to know who's really sort of tiring. Um, as well as a few other things like who's injured, who's been booked. Those are the players that you want to replace. So I will be making a few changes. And where do I want to make my first change? Probably in midfield, but I can't really do too much in midfield. Agassi's in danger of being booked. So let's see here. I think Bruskegin coming off is a decent shout. We'll get Onyewu out and put Gili in that back line. And I guess George Alonso. And we're going to have to play Falcon. Wide right, why not? Let's play him as a winger in that case. So that's not bad. That's not a bad set. The three unfit players before the game, the three that weren't really match fit, you know, they've had a good hour now and we've replaced them all. We're doing quite well, so. Let's see. You got what it takes, boys. You got what it takes. Appreciate the encouraging feedback. That's why you do substitute team talks, because very rarely does it go badly. Most times they ignore you, but now and again, something comes up and helps you. So Luigi Falcone out on that wide right wing. He is looking forward to playing this game. So those are my subs, and half an hour left. We've injected a bit more sort of uh, reliability into that back line, I'd hope. And also, let's not forget that, you know, a little bit up front. Nagazi will get booked. If I had a centre mid, he would have been already off the pitch. Let's see... 
so they're starting to make subs I like to then jump over and change things up so the tactical off and on Matteo Ricci so I guess we'll just go in hard on him and leave the other ones set up as they were so this looks to be a very good first game for us here in charge of Catania in the cup it's a useful run out we're going to be able to do a lot with our let's, let's work ball into the box then so we're going to be do, we're going to be able to do a lot this season if this is the kind of opponent we're going to be facing um oh that's both center mids being booked and both would be off very very quickly if i had subs and if i had central midfielders i could trust so yeah i i feel fairly comfortable in this game i feel fairly comfortable with the way things had been pretty much um in the league this season i think that's going to be okay we just need the players to get fit we need them to buy in and learn the tactical system that's kind of my big issue now and we're going to throw a few a few things at them here in the final stages let's see we're going to go up to fluid we're going to overload. Ask them to show some passion. And let's see. As we're tiring in the final stages here. This very early season game. Can we get something at the end of this match? So we do not need to. Have a replay. And it looks like no. That counter-attack of doom from Lores. That is absolutely poor. There's no way that we should have thrown everybody forward there. That's my fault for not setting up the tactics for set pieces. But this is a very harsh loss. Um, so yeah, that, that's not good. That's not good. So we've come to attack late on in the game, at the death of the game, to give them the winner. The last kick of the first half we kind of switched off for, um, and that's what gave them the equaliser. And we're out to the cup. So let's go shout at the boys. I'm really not happy with that. We should have done so much better. Oh, wow. 46 minutes and 86 minutes. I mean, really kind of switched off. Really did switch off at the wrong time there. But that's the, uh, that's the cup dealt with. I'm fairly happy as well to be out of the cup so the only thing i'm going to do in this is go talk to george and say you did well creating chances uh nobody else really played well enough to get anything there so we are hurting with a couple of injuries in that midfield so yeah that's fine so italian football return for oguchi on Yewu. Got a goal in his debut. Not bad from the big boy. Not bad from him at all. So now. We've got a couple more friendlies to go through. And then it'll be on to the, re on to the regular season. I don't know why that happens. Although I do love this kind of. Glitch that happens. There we go. Um, 
45 minutes until fit. So a disappointing start to life in Italy, but I do think the club is on a much securer footing than it was. There's a little bit of money in the bank as we get rid of our youngsters. We have upgraded the first team. I think the defence is significantly better. We've got a couple of options now elsewhere, including another attacking midfielder I think could be quite good this season and next season. So we're looking for a mid table position it's not going to be easy we're actually supposed to finish eighth but we've also got that 11 point deduction to deal with so i'm not going to be too downhearted about getting knocked out the cup i think things are moving in the right direction we just got to keep our heads up and keep pushing forward so we're going to leave the video there i hope you've enjoyed i hope you're as excited as i am looking forward in this save because I think this is somewhere we can really turn into our own club. Uh, put our real stamp on it. Players, staff, facilities, everything pretty much can get built through us. So, thanks for watching. Come back soon. And until next time, guys, take care of yourselves.